let's do our last example for this lesson. Now, note, this is the second case of the law of cosines that we have talked about, called SSS, or side, 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 because we know all three sides, but no angles. If you have SSS, then you must solve for the biggest angle first. That is the number one rule with side, side, side. We need to solve for the biggest angle first. How do we know it's the biggest angle? It'll be across from the biggest side. So here's my biggest side, go across. So capital B is my biggest angle. So that is the first one I'm gonna solve for. Now, if we think about the law of cosines that we learned and talked about in the last two videos, there's only one capital letter in the law of cosines, and it's at the end. So if we want to end with a capital B, then that means I'm going to start with a lowercase b squared. Now we do the law of cosines. So we started with b squared, so then we do the other two letters squared. Then it's always a minus 2. Repeat the two letters I just did cosine of capital what I started with. So across from A is little a, across from B is little b, and across from C is little c. So let's fill in what we know. I know little b is 16. I know little a is 10. I know little c is 8. Repeat those two that I just did, and then cosine, I do not know capital B. Now, if you remember from the last video, we talked about simplifying this in a really specific way. We're going to do the same thing here, where the first thing you're going to put into your calculator is that, 10 squared plus 8 squared. When you put that in, you should get 164. Next, put this part in, negative 2 times 10 times 8. When you put that in, you should get negative 160. And then I have my cosine of capital B. And then I need to do my 16 squared. You put that into your calculator, you should get 265. So, this is the equation I currently have. And remember, I'm solving for capital B. Now, we are about to get to Mrs. Johnson's number one pet peeve. I see students make this mistake all the time, and this is a seventh grade mistake. So if you make this mistake, you will lose points on your test. And the mistake is this. I see students all the time try to subtract those two numbers. That is wrong. Let me try and help you understand why. Let's say I took this equation and I rewrote it like this. Like this. That's an equation you've been solving since like seventh grade. If I gave you this equation, you would never do 5 minus 3. You wouldn't do that. You know instinctively that's wrong. So if you don't subtract them here, don't subtract them there. The other reason, these are being multiplied together. I cannot separate them yet. So if I look at this one, you would subtract 5 first to get 5 equals negative 3x and then divide by negative 3 to get your answer. Same process over here. Do not subtract those. You're going to start by subtracting the red one. So minus 164 to both sides. And we get 265 minus 164 is 101. 
And actually, guys, I just realized I made a small mistake. 16 squared is not 265. That is 256. My bad. Oops. Oh, well. Anyway, 256 minus 164, that's 92. So we get 92 equals negative 160 cosine of B. Here is my second pet peeve. Do not add 160. That's wrong. This 160 is timesing to the cosine. So to get rid of it, I need to divide by negative 160. Same thing we did over here, divided by the negative number to get the x by itself. So now I have cosine of capital B is 92 over negative 160. So now, how do I get rid of a cosine? Well, same way I get rid of the sine, I do the inverse cosine. Cosine and inverse cosine cancel each other out. So I get B, capital B, is the inverse cosine of 92 over negative 160, which you type into your calculator. Now, be careful when you type this, that on that negative, you use the negative sign on your calculator, not the minus sign. They are usually different buttons. But when you type that in, you should end up with B equals 125.099. Make sure you have degrees, because this is a capital letter, so it's an angle. And there we go. That is the second version of the law of cosines. Now, here's the good news. You remember in the last video, we solved for this letter here. And then in this video, the letter was over here. Those are the only two places your letter will show up in the law of cosines. Either it'll show up over here, and you'll solve it like we did in the last video, or it will end up here, and you'll solve it using the steps that we did here. So, now that we have capital B, I know that capital B is 125.099. Well, look at this. I now have one complete pair. Sweet. So, step Two, now we can use the law of sines because I have a complete pair. We can solve for capital A or capital C. Either should give you the same answer. So actually, let's change my mind. I want to do capital A first. So we're going to use law of sines. On the left is the pair that I know, which in this case is the B's. On the right is the pair that I want to know, in this case, the A's. So if I plug in what I know, I should get this. And then we're going to do our cross multiplying. So here's what I want you to do. At this point, we have done law of signs a lot. So I would like you to pause the video and try to solve it out from there on your own. Ready, set, go. Welcome back. Check what you got with what I got. If you did not get this answer, a couple things I would check. Number one, make sure that this is what you got when you solve for A. If this matches what you got, then a couple things I would check, typing it into your calculator. Number one, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If it's not in degree mode, this is not what you're going to get. Number two, make sure you close the parentheses after your sign when you're typing it into your calculator, or it will give you the wrong answer. And number two, and finally number three, don't forget about this little times 10. I notice a lot of students will write this sign and then forget to write the times 10 at the end. And that will impact your answer as well. Okay, last step. I know capital A, I know capital B, so the last thing I need to solve for is capital C. And I can use my 180 rule for that because I know two of the angles. I can subtract them from 180 to find the last angle. 
If I subtract those, then I should get 24.148 degrees. And that is the last version of the law of cosines. For your homework, you will do problems 1 and 3. And keep in mind these problems, you don't have to solve the whole triangle. When it says find BC, that means this side. AKA when I go across from big A, this is find little a, essentially. And that's all you need to find. You don't need find big B or big C, just little a. Same thing for this one, go across. This is actually the same thing as finding little b. And then you also have question 11 to do and question 15. So you can go ahead and get started on your homework now.